Okay, guys, um, we're going to review the states of matter and then talk about uh, gases and some laws that have been derived about gases. Um, first off, what is matter? Well, there's a fantastic meme uh, that I thoroughly enjoy that says, you have mass, you take up space, you matter. Uh, anything that has a volume or takes up space and has a mass, that is what we consider matter. Uh, the important thing for you to know right now, which you should already know, is that all matter is made up of really tiny particles. And we'll get to the name of what those particles are later. Uh, a state of matter, then, would be a condition of matter or in what form that matter is existing in. Uh, so the three states of matter that we're familiar with on Earth are solids, liquids, and gases. And you can see the what each particle will look like, or what the combination of particles will look like for each of those. But for solids, they're in a regular arrangement, they're in fixed positions, they might, the particles might vibrate around a little bit, uh, but they don't move around. Uh, and those particles are very close together. Um, being solid means that they have a definite shape and a definite volume. Uh, you can measure that volume and you can describe the shape. Uh, liquids, though, they take the shape of, what are con of whatever container they're in because their particles are randomly arranged and they can move around each other. So they just kind of flow and take up whatever shape uh, container they're in. Uh, but they do have a fixed volume. We can measure the volume of a liquid. We do that with graduated cylinders or beakers or uh, any other liquid measuring device. And then we have gases. Uh, which are like liquids in that the particles are randomly arranged, uh, but they're very far apart and they move very quickly in a whole bunch of different directions. And gases are kind of weird. They don't have a shape, and it's kind of impossible to actually take the volume of the gas because there's so much space between the particles. Like, what are you really measuring? So um, those are the three states of matter, and you should already know all of that, but if you don't, that's okay. You do now. Um, going into gases a little bit further, uh, scientists have always tried to study uh, the behavior of gases, try to figure out why gases do what they do. And to do that, mathematically, they need to make some assumptions. Uh, those assumptions are that the particles are very far apart, especially compared to their size. Um, and then those particles are moving around uh, and they hit each other with what we call an inelastic collision, uh, which means that no energy was lost during that collision. And they can hit each other, they can hit the walls of whatever container they're in, um, but they don't lose their energy, they just keep moving around. And because of that, they have kinetic energy and they're moving around at random. Um, for ideal gases, they also believe that uh, the particles uh, aren't, they don't have any um, attraction to each other, like solids and liquids do, where the particles are close together because they like to be, and gases like to just bounce off each other. And that's mostly caused because they're moving around so fast. Um, but they just assume there's no attraction whatsoever. Uh, and the, the temperature of the gas depends on how much kinetic energy, on average, each of the particles has. Um, then we had some scientists come along. Uh, you don't need to know all of these, uh, but just some very simple gas laws. Avogadro said that the more number of gas particles you have, the more volume it takes up. Um, Boyle came along and said that uh, the more pressure you have, the less volume, or the more volume, the less pressure, whichever way you want to look at that. Uh, Charles came along and said that the more temperature you have, the higher the volume. Uh, Gay-Lussac came along and said that the more temperature you have, the more pressure you have. And then we can combine all those together uh, and look at the combined gas law, which describes all of those things. Uh, we also have the ideal gas law, which takes into account the number of particles. The combined gas law doesn't. Um, but it's essentially the same thing. We say that the pressure times the volume is equal to the number of particles times the ideal gas constant times the temperature. Uh, and we'll get to that math later, uh, but the important thing for you is to be able to look at these graphs 
and describe what they're talking about. So Avogadro, like I said, they said the more he said the more uh, number of particles you have, the higher your volume is. So that's what that graph shows there. Uh, Boyle said that the more pressure you have, the lower the volume you have. So as you increase pressure on a on a container of gas, the volume goes down. If you increase the temperature, Charles says that the volume goes up, and that's what his graph says. Or if you keep all the variables the same except temperature and pressure, and you increase the temperature, then the pressure increases. Uh, and we'll look at all of these things separately, um, but for now it's just good for you to kind of get an idea of what we're talking about. Um, and that is all for today.